you also, if you punt, you run the risk of a block, except when it's Chris Gardaki. I don't know that that's a risk. Chris Gardaki, as we mentioned before, with over a thousand punts, no blocks. Yeah, and I think this is a is a play that the Steelers have to do is get your your punt team in here and just punt the ball away. He's trying to punt it out of bounds because you've got Sproles back there. And that's exactly what Gordaki will do. But you know what? What would be, what would be a, a, the first half without a penalty with the clock showing three zeros? Well, the first play of the game was a penalty, right? But it was on the run. The last play of the half uh, has to be a penalty. It has to be. Tim McGraw, along with Week Five highlights, Governor Schwarzenegger will join us. So will Illegal Jim Belushi. Illegal formation, offense, 94. A penalty decline at the end of the half. No, it can't be the end of the half because San Diego Donnie Edwards is running out there right now and saying, wait a second, if it's an illegal formation, shouldn't we get have a chance to get the ball back is the question. So the Chargers go out and plead their case. You know, if that's the rule, then a team, why would you not line up with an illegal formation? But that is the rule. It's halftime, 14-7 Pittsburgh. The NFL Big Man Dance Challenge Team Competition. The Kansas City Chiefs bring an all-star lineup to the big dance floor. You say dancing with the stars. Their opponent, none other than the Super Bowl champion, New England Patriots. Our moves are so tight, we'll be dancing all night. Word. It's the Chiefs against the champs. When Kansas City collides with New England on NFL Big Man Dance Challenge. That's it, huh? That's it. Hit the show. Good job. Good job. Good job. I need to talk to you, son. I need to fuck. I need to fuck. I need to fuck. There's an easier way to get the gear the pros wear. Just call 877-NFL-SHOP. For a free team catalog, go to NFL Shop on NFL.com or call 877-NFL-SHOP. There's nothing else like Night Stalker on Thursday night. A secret fraternity. Our vow binds us together. And the student bodies are stacking up. We've got the story. No, it's what the four of you unleashed that night. You won't believe they're able to do that on TV, says the New York Post. He was literally scared to death. Stuart Townsend, Gabrielle Union. Your life is in danger. An all new Night Stalker, Thursday, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Parental discretion advised. design begins with a single line. A line that challenges. A line that creates power. Or control. Or size. A line can make what's functional, emotional. At infinity, a line has been drawn. Matt O'Donnell and Tamala Edwards, tomorrow morning on Action News. The Toyota Halftime Show, brought to you by Toyota. Choose any direction, as long as it's forward. Toyota moving forward. Here now, Al Michaels. We had a scoreless first quarter. All the points coming in the second period. Pittsburgh had a 14-0 lead. San Diego scores at the end to make it 14-7. And that's our halftime score tonight at Qualcomm Stadium. Good ball game as Pittsburgh takes on the Chargers. Veterans Day is still about a month away, but yesterday may as well have been Veterans Day in the National Football League. So says Tim McGraw with Week 5 Highlights. This one's for the old guys. Monday Night Style. You ready to turn it up and turn it all the way up? The Bucks lose their first to a recently retired champ. The crowd at the middle lands in a frenzy. The pack put 
He's a 52. Happy birthday, Fred. An impressive display by the Packer offense. The Titans come alive with a healthy Steve McNair. Dilfer and the Browns get it done against the Bears. Metzl gets another W in Big D. Is this the NFL or the AARP? Because I like it. I love it. I want some more. From Indy are the only ones without a defeat. Welcome to the National Football League. The Pats win another off of Ben and Terry shoe. Seattle finally takes a shootout in St. Louis. Jared Payton scores, bet your sweetness is a glow. Detroit knows you don't stop till you hear the whistle blow. Cause I like it. Vinny and company. Well, the governor is here, Arnold Schwarzenegger, a guest of Alex Spanos, the owner of the San Diego Chargers, and in Alex's booth tonight. But first, let me ask you, as long as we're in Southern California, Governor, Los Angeles, I know you become involved in trying to get a, an NFL team back in L.A. How likely is that in the next three years, and what is the likeliest site? Well, I get really excited over the, just the thought of having finally uh, a team in Los Angeles because we have been trying to get a team there for a long time. But now, of course, I'm governor of California, and now I, I just hope that we get a great team to California because no matter where the team goes, it will be great. But living in Los Angeles, I hope that it comes to Los Angeles. You think it'll happen by 2009? Uh, I think that they're very close. to doing really well with the negotiations, so there's a chance that by by next spring they have a vote on it. You know, you're a veteran in this booth. You were in, in the booth in 2000. We're in New York. We're doing the Jets against Miami. You come into the booth. It's 23-7. Miami I just want to go back and, and play a little bite as you came into our booth with the Jets down by 16 points back in October of 2000. Wayne Krobeck is going to pull it off. I think usual as usual the Jets are going to come from behind. You will see it's going to give, give them some serious trouble now. The Jets were down 30 to 7. They win the game. A miracle comeback. It's voted the greatest game in the history of Monday Night Football. Now I'd like to ask you who you like in the fifth that Santa needed tomorrow after that. But who do you like in this game tonight? Well, I think that uh, San Diego, the Chargers are back in the game, which is really great because I'm here to support Alex Spano's team and to support the Chargers. It's a great team, and they've won the last two games in a row now. This could be the third one. I think the momentum is on their side. And I think that uh, Drew uh, is going to really pull it off, and uh, Drew Brees and also LT. I think they both are going to come from behind like this game and they're going to win. They're going to win this year today. You heard it here first. Of course you're not running for governor of Pennsylvania. We know that. No, that's governor, okay. thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank Arnold you. Schwarzenegger in the booth. Back we come in a minute. Everyone talks about how tough their truck is. How much it can haul. But when we build a truck we like to think beyond the first load, to the second, the third, the fourth. That's why load after load, job after job, year after year, nothing stops a Tundra. Toyota trucks, moving forward. Not all men are shallow. We need to find, you know, women with values who care about the simple things in life. 
poor girls. Chick that'll do anything for a burger. She, she wants to get in your bed just to get warm. For most of them, there's still some hope. You've grown. Basically, you're looking for someone like you, but with big cans. Freddy premieres 8 37 30 Central right after Wednesday's number one comedy, George Lopez, only on ABC. Jim Belushi's become a regular in this booth over the uh, past oh, yes. two years because the show begins its, its fifth season. First of all, the Bears. What about your Bears? They're one and three. That's the bad news. The good news is they're in the NFC North. They are, they are, they are. And I think the White Sox can beat them right now. Uh, they, they, that, that, that loss to Cleveland really killed me. I, I think I I'm, almost didn't come here tonight. I almost didn't want to watch football for the rest of the season. That was killed me yesterday. Wait, you're a Cubs fan. Can you be a White Sox fan too? Well, I can be a Chicago fan because any kind of win for Chicago is a win for everybody in the city. But uh, I am a Cubs fan. But we're rooting for the South. According to Jim, five years. Five years. It starts uh, tomorrow night, new time. New time. We're on 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock Central. Uh, we're starting the Tuesday night line off up with uh, us and then Commander in Chief and Boston Legal. It's a big night for us at ABC. Beautiful. Look forward to it. Thank you, Al. Good to be here. Come to Green Bay. Ah, <laughs> Green Bay. Ah, Late November. has got a shot. There. Yes, they do. Jim Belushi with us. Second half coming up from San Diego after this. Everyone talks about how tough their truck is, how much it can haul. But when we build a truck, we like to think beyond the first load to the second, the third, the fourth. That's why load after load, job after job, year after year, nothing stops a Tundra. Toyota trucks, moving forward. The Toyota Halftime Show, brought to you by Toyota. Choose any direction, as long as it's forward. Toyota, moving forward. We'll return with a second half kickoff after this from our ABC stations. Jim's about to teach his son a lesson. I'm trying to raise a man here. Excuse me? His wife will never forget. You didn't teach him anything, you cheated. He's not going to know that. All new Jim, Tuesday, 8, 7 Central, followed by an all new Rodney, only on ABC. At all new Lost, Wednesday night, 8 Central, only on ABC. I'm Jim Gardner. Rescuers are racing against time to find survivors in Pakistan, Kashmir, and India, where tens of thousands have already died. And residents pumping out water and assessing damage from Saturday's storm brace for more rain. And once the rain starts, it won't let up through Wednesday morning. A flood watch in effect. I'll let you know how much we'll get in the Accu Weather Forecast. He turned the Phillies into winners but never made the playoffs. The Phillies fired general manager Ed Wade. Gary Popper with that story on Action News after the game. Cinnamon and vanilla come together in delicious new vanilla spice flavored coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. Suddenly vanilla seems pretty exciting. Dunkin' Donuts, bring yourself back. The truth on taxes. John Corzine has voted to lower taxes 70 times. And Doug Forrester? As a mayor and councilman, Forrester raised property taxes 200%. Now he's proposed a plan that eliminates property tax rebates for seniors in the middle class and gives tax credits to the wealthy. It's a plan that will require deep cuts in education, health care, and emergency response. Doug Forrester, the wrong answer for New Jersey. My dearest Lisa, as we enter our first day apart, I already miss you terribly. Believe me, honey, <laughs> it's no picnic out here. But don't you worry about me. Somehow, I'll get through it. And know in your heart, I will see you soon. Though, I just can't say when. Patrick. You'll find it hard to come back. The 244 horsepower pilot from Honda. For a limited time, enjoy a delicious warm cinnamon stick from Dunkin' Donuts. The perfect treat for when you're on the go. Dunkin' Donuts, bring yourself back. Rick Williams and Monica Malpass, weeknights at 5 on Action News. And we start the third quarter at Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. Al Michaels, John Madden, and Sam Ryan with you. 14-7 as we wrap up week 5 of the 2005 NFL season. Thousands of Steeler fans here tonight. 
Their club up by a touchdown. But Darren Sproles will get the ball for San Diego. They're free to kick off. And away we go in the second half. Sproles from the five yard line. Rookie out of Kansas State. An electrifying run back guy. 48 yard run back at the end of the first half. Helps set up the touchdown up to the 27. Here's Sam. Well, Al, I've been trying to think of an adjective to describe Marty Schottenheimer going into the locker room. All he can come up with, enraged. He said, we got to get our defense off the field. But he also said to me, penalties, two silly personal fouls. Gave them 30 yards on that last touchdown drive there. He said, you know, I'm going to take care of this in the locker room. And maybe some guys won't be coming out. Let's get it back to you, Al. Well, seven penalties for 87 yards. That's a killer. And that's what happened to Schottenheimer's team in the first half. Here's Tomlinson swinging to the outside. And it's Troy Palomalu who knocks him down after Joey Porter had strung him out. Take a look at the numbers through the first half. And again, the key thing is that penalty situation at the end of it. You can see the Chargers, too, only 19 yards. When you can do that to a team of LaDainian Tomlinson, that is sensational. And then, like you say, the, the seven penalties for 87 yards. So you take that combination of stopping Tomlinson and then the Chargers stopping themselves with the penalties. Second down and 12. Breeze is going to swing it over the middle into a lot of traffic, and it's knocked away. Trying to get it to Keenan McCardell, who is surrounded by a trio of white shirts. Star track for the Chargers tonight. Breeze was doing next to nothing until late in the half after that Sproles run back had set it up so he has that touchdown but also a pick Tomlinson has been held in check and Gates was very silent until the end of the first half third and 12 let's five man rush and they get to him the pressure gets to him and it is incomplete James Farrier in on the posse and it's fourth down you know and on that play with Damian Tomlinson had to had to be the the blocker James Ferrier was coming in on him now again anytime they go to the dime defense which the Steelers are in now 75 percent of the time they blitz and you see Tomlinson had to pick up Ferrier and Ferrier just got his inside shoulder and then he was right on Drew Brees. Mike Cypher is the punt. Antoine Randall L is going to let it bounce. Takes a nice charge of bounce. Picks up about 12 extra yards on the ground. Ball down to the 26. It's a 50 yard boot. First minute, third period. Pittsburgh up by seven. Playing crazy. Great taste, great times. Tell me you didn't invite him. You may not have the contract to build the next great suspension bridge, or the workforce to dig the next Panama Canal, and you may not be working on the next big sports complex, but your truck could. The GMC Sierra with the available Vortec Max engineered to the highest standard. Professional grade. 26 million people have made Commander in Chief Tuesday night's number one show. She's a woman. She isn't a woman. She is a president. This is not politics as usual. What a town. You can't even trust the backstabbers. All new Commander in Chief Tuesday, 9, 8 central, only on ABC. 
Pittsburgh has the ball for the first time in the third quarter. Steelers at their own 26 yard line. Willie Parker starts as the running back. Parker six carries first half for 23 yards. Roethlisberger to throw under pressure but he steps up great pocket presence and it's tipped and it's caught by Parker so he's able to escape the sack it's tipped by Randall Godfrey the linebacker and it turns in to a completion and a gain of 14 yards well that was very very close to an interception watch Randall Godfrey there he's just standing there free and you, and you see when Roethlisberger starts to run Godfrey is watching him all the way and as the ball comes out he reacts to it and it just goes right through his hands and right into Willie Parker's. That is what Roethlisberger does maybe better than any quarterback in the league along with I guess Brett Favre the 40 yard line Parker and that is when you get contact and when contact is made either before you throw or when you throw it would figure that you're you would not be as proficient as you are if you are not under pressure or not contacted but not Roethlisberger as you take a look at Ben and we'll bring you the numbers that our man Steve Hurd has come up with showing you the proficiency of Roethlisberger when he is not only under duress but being contacted physically in the process of throwing or just before he throws second down and nine from the 41 yard line. This time he is not contacted and the pass is incomplete. Then for Heinz Ward. Take a look at this. I mean some some numbers to chew on here. All players in the league last year and counting this season 82.8 the pass rating but if you contact them it's way down 52 9. So you can see the effect of the defense. But you look at Roethlisberger 98 1 without contact. But if you get a hand on him, 108.4. So he is better after he's been physically contacted. Because that buys him some time. You know, he gets the initial look before he gets contacted. Then after he gets contacted and gets away, he gets a second look at it. And that's where he gets a lot of his completion. Third and nine. Here he steps up. He feels the pressure. And this time, the contact takes him down. There were just too many blue shirts there. Anytime you can, Scott is the I was first just going to say anytime that you have contact you can go sideways and you can turn up but once you start to go backwards you're dead. You see he's OK here he's moving up now, now he's OK and right there when he starts to go backwards well he's knocked backwards. I mean they just surround him. that's what you do you we used to call it put a triangle on him you have a guy in front of him and a guy on either side and there's no place he can go. Chris Goldocki the punt. Close to a block. That would have been big news. And then it is muffed, and Pittsburgh has it back. So Sproles lost the ball. He was going to run it back, and he lays it right into the hands of a Steeler, Chidi Uwama. Number 29, the defensive back and special teams performer, Uwama comes away with the football. See, Sproles was going to fair catch that, but he let it get too close to his body and it looks like it's going to hit him in the face mask and the shoulder pads. You, you have to get your hands out in front. He was going back. He fair catches. I think his own guy kind of flashed in front of him and maybe maybe he lost a little concentration from his own guy because he was trying to adjust on the ball. It looked like it hit him right in the face mask. See I warm up comes away with it and now there's a conference even though there was no flag thrown on the play. Yeah that was great in Florence you see 29 here he gets hit and he's going to come across. Well that's no excuse though. I mean he just he just didn't get his hands out in front. Right there. You're right though. He that's that, distracted. that's where Florence Florence came across. Yep. Yeah. I'm wondering if they're going to if they're talking about interference with a fair catch they, they, just, threw a they flag. just threw a flag I'm, I'm wondering if that was not interfering with a fair catch no because it was his own guy 
The receiver signaled for a fair catch. By rule, he must give, be given an unmolested opportunity to complete the catch. He muffed the ball and was trying to catch it again when the defensive player caught it and took it away from him. That is fair catch interference. 15 yards, automatic first down, San Diego. Well, you talk about a Christmas present, and of course, power will go nuts. But the question is, even though it's his own man, did the Pittsburgh Steeler player, Iwoma, interfere with him? I think it's what he said. After it bounces off him, you have to let him still have the right to catch it. Right. Now, that's, that's a stupid rule. Yeah, it is. I mean, but that's only, stupid. It's I only don't... after a fair catch, though. Yeah, but you see here, he doesn't catch it there. Now you can't interfere with his next right to catch it. But that's that's a bunch of blown. I mean, that yeah. that's a rule. <laughs> I mean, Bill Cowher's right. Give it to him, man. Give it to him. You're right. From the 37-yard line, Breeze now after they get this big break. And he'll throw the ball away. And was a receiver in the neighborhood. Harrison put the pressure on. Receiver was in the vicinity, direction in the vicinity of the pass. There is no intentional grounding. Second down. One thing about this Steeler defense, they've they've kind of smothered Drew Brees. I mean, they you know they're they're doing this no huddle thing or huddling here at the line of scrimmage, trying to take a lot of time. But but this defense going to three four, and then and then when you get them in a long yard, just go six defensive backs, bring the blitz. The Chargers really haven't picked up on it yet. From the 37 yard line, Breeze throws and then is caught by Parker over the middle and he gets taken out of bounds by Polamano right into the San Diego bench. And now, of course, you've got another flag. Anytime you have action like that on the sideline, Marty better watch out. <laughs> if, you're gonna, if you're gonna grab, you better grab yours, not theirs. So you're going to have a penalty here, and we'll also elaborate on the fair catch call as soon as we get the call here from Triplet. According, I can do it now until Triplet's ready. The opportunity for a fair catch does not end when a player muffs a fair catch. So in other words, when the ball pops out, that's what it says in the rule book. And I agree with you, John. I think that's a it's that's stupid. a bad rule. It's a yeah. bad rule. Yeah. That's a rule that needs to be looked at in the offseason. After the play is over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 43, the defense. That's a 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Polamalu. So, in other words, when Sproles is, is muffing it here, he still, he still must have the opportunity, even though he was in no position to really come up with the ball because he was going backwards and the ball was popping out forwards. He had to be given the opportunity. And of course, you know, Cowher is still nuts on the sideline. You know, I can see that if if the guy kind of bobbles it and he's getting control of it, you can't hit him then. You still have a fair catch protection. But but not that one. At the 36 yard line. Breeze throws to the outside. Tomlinson. And Ladanian are around the corner and he picks up another first down. So the Chargers taking advantage of a lot of things on this drive. Yeah, and this is the thing. There's there's a lot of ways to get the ball to your to your running back. I mean, you can go and and hand it to him, obviously, and try and get him on a sweep, or you can get him on a swing like this and get him out in space. And when you have a guy like Ladanian Tomlinson, that such as is such a good runner, open space and power and all those things, that's not a bad way to get him the ball. He's caught four for 25 yards tonight. He's carried seven times for 20. Here's number eight. With a burst inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. Joey Porter making the tackle. Tomlinson with a big time streak going in the history of the National Football League. There is consecutive seasons with 10 or more rushing touchdowns. Peyton Campbell, Dickerson, and Sean Alexander, and that's still in progress right now. And Tomlinson already has eight rushing touchdowns this season. So with two tonight, he'd be the record holder. The running inside has been tough. Second and three. And it's going to be third and about a yard and a half. Harrison with the tackle there. And you can see what the Chargers are thinking here that they've tried to run inside. And with that, you know, that Casey Hampton, those two inside linebackers of the Steelers, 
That's been tough running. So now they're trying to get Ladanian Tomlinson out to the edges. They did it on second down with more success. I mean, on, on first down with more success than they had on second down. Now this becomes third in that two or three. This is for most teams it would be a passing down. With a running back like Ladanian Tomlinson, you have a two-way go. At the 16-yard line. Here come the Steelers. Breeze gets it away. Juggle, still juggle, and then drop. Incomplete. Work it outside the Keenan McCardell. That's the play that we all hate on the third and third and two, and you don't even throw it the two yards. No, the thing is, if you're if you're going to do that, then you, you you're just as well to hand it to Ladanian Tomlinson and you know let a great back run with the ball. What they tried to do, they had an overload on the right side, and they tried to get you know a single back on this side. But again, when you only have two yards, you have to get it up. You have to run a three-yard pattern anyway. Nate Kading trying to obliterate the nightmare of last year when he missed. The field goal that would have won the Jets game in overtime in the playoffs hasn't missed this year and he's now six for six as that one is good from 34. So the Chargers got some breaks on that drive some calls that went their way they get three and it's a four point lead for Pittsburgh. Are you ready to rock. On November 4th a whole new era in Disney animated entertainment hits theaters. Whoa. Don't miss the holiday movie event that's like nothing you've ever seen before. We surrender. Take the key to the city. Key to my car. Tick tack. Walt Disney Pictures presents <laughs> Chicken Little. Come on, hurry. Oh, look, a penny. Guys. Oh, right. Ah! Discover the film Time Magazine calls a winner. It's one of the funniest, most charming, most exhilarating movies in years. Hurry! 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 <laughs> yes! <laughs> Come on! This holiday season, it doesn't get any bigger than Chicken Little. Rated G, in theaters November 4th. What's that noise? Sorry, nervous eater. is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. Monday Night Football from San Diego being brought to you by Anheuser-Busch. Smooth and refreshing. Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. GMC trucks and SUVs. We are professional grade. And uh, autotrader.com. A smarter way to buy and sell a car. Goodyear, the aerial coverage tonight. Mission Valley, Qualcomm Stadium, home of the Chargers from 67. Used to be the home of the Padres. They, of course, have moved downtown to Petco Park. Lost in the playoffs. And three to the Cardinals. Coakley. And Coakley gets taken down at the 16 yard line by Clinton Hart. Had a heart to heart talk with him. How'd you learn to pour like that? Huh? It was nothing. Put on side, no good. Put on center, the release combination and aroma. Hey, buddy. Could you read me a story? Um, football. That's okay. I can freeze time. Whoa. The DirecTV DVR, the most magical thing that ever games. happened to TV. Finally, an easy-to-use DVR that gives you the power to pause and rewind live TV, so you'll never miss a second of what's important to you. <laughs> Somebody up there loves you. DirecTV. 
Sign up and get a DirecTV DVR free. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Want to get a lot of people looking at your used car? Then list it at the number one place people look for used cars. Autotrader.com. It's the best place for your car to get noticed by serious car buyers. Autotrader.com. The smarter way to buy and sell a car. Tuesday, 10, 9 central. And can only truly bond in the woods. I hate nature. Real lawyers go oh, fishing. Oh. What are you doing in my bag? I don't know. We slept together. I won't tell. I promise. An all-new Boston Legal Tuesday, 10, 9 central, only on ABC. Next Monday night, the Indianapolis Colts undefeated 5-0 against the St. Louis Rams from Indy. Texan Seahawks is your fair on Sunday night on ESPN. Now Pittsburgh begins this drive from the 15, up by four, early third. Parker almost got stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Merriman was right there to break the play up. Yeah, they talk about Sean Merriman and how, how strong he is and how powerful he is, but he looked like he was shot out of something on that one. Look at how quickly he gets in the backfield. Mm. Not only how quickly, but how deep he gets in the backfield. That That is penetration. When you get anyone that deep in your backfield, you don't have a chance to run with the ball. And he didn't. 12th overall pick, as we said before, youngest player in the league. 21 in about five months. Roethlisberger moving out by his time. Swings it and that is caught along the sideline by Hines Ward. Kept his feet in. You've got another flag down here. And that was one of those deals where Roethlisberger was kind of, I don't know if it was contact or not, but he was kind of forced to move Probably out and buy him more time. Jamal Williams really got to push up the middle on him, and he had to get out of there. Illegal contact, number 29 of the defense. That penalty is declined. Correction. Boy, this guy's something, isn't he? Oh, boy. Right from the start. What's the pressure that he gets straight up the middle? Jamal Williams just breaks a double team. In fact, it turns out into a triple team, and then he's able to come to the outside, buy more time, and then find Heinz Ward out here. Still waiting on the correction. Pittsburgh has accepted a penalty for the illegal contact on number 29 of the defense. That's a five yard penalty and an automatic first down at the previous spot. So let me get this straight. The play gains more yardage, but they take the automatic first down. All right. Well, he didn't have a first down, did he? Yeah, you know what? It's interesting. It would have been third and one right. for first and ten. And that's that's what he traded. Right. He traded third down for first down. At the 15-yard line. We start again. And this is Willie Parker taking it up to the 18-yard line. And Willie Parker's only had seven rushes for 24 yards up until to that run there. So he's been kind of quiet. And you know, we know Jerome Bettis, he he played in there a little and caught that screen, you know, made the touchdown down there in the goal line. But Parker really hasn't had much running room tonight. Parker nine carries for 23 yards. It's about two and a half. Both these defenses have been tough on runners. Yeah, Tomlinson tonight, nine carries, only 28 yards. And that's batted in the air and incomplete. And that's Merriman, his coming out party tonight, the rookie out of Maryland. I was just thinking that same thing, that this is his coming out party because he, he hasn't been playing much before. Here he is at the end of the line, and you just see him get that push, and when the guy stops and, and goes to throw, just get up in the air, stop your rush, and jump. Sean Merriman does it. He gets a rush. He sees it's throwing. He jumps up and bats it down. He bats it up. Another bonus from, as we said before, the Eli Manning deal because that pick was the Giants' first round draft choice, which went to San Diego. And he finally looks like the guy the Chargers thought they were getting. 
And on third down and six, it is short of the first down as Keith Miller gets stopped. Terrence Keel is there. And they're forced to punt. And now you look at that decision and say, you know, if they had third and one, they should have taken the third and one because they had a lot better field position. In fact, I think Heinz Ward caught the ball in front of the original or the line of scrimmage right now. Yeah, that's that's why I was I was it was a very curious call. It's an interesting call when you think about it. Do you want a third and one at your own 24 yard line or first and 10 at your own 15? Now, you know, if, if Jerome Bettis had been around for a couple of weeks and had been playing, I would feel comfortable with third and one if I were the Steelers. Yeah, that's a good point. Here's Gardaki's punt. Scrolls. No, well, almost muffed it. 38 yard line, trying to turn the corner. Runs along the entire picket line and finally gets taken down as he crosses the 40 yard line. Kaisel makes the tackle 38 yard punt three yard return four point game 647 left in the third. When treetops alight in fiery hues and a crisp chill hangs heavy in the air it can mean only one thing it is autumn the season of miracles a time when skeptics become believers and mere mortals become supermen. Unthinkable yardage yields to missile-like precision. Hulks of muscle and bone bold like a house of cards. Players deemed too small become giants. Distances deemed too long become trifling. Time and time again, the impossible becomes routine. There's a name for belittling the insurmountable. It's called professional grade, a higher standard to which every professional aspires, the same standard to which every GMC is engineered, like the indomitable GMC Sierra HD with an available 605 foot-pounds of torque, or the incredible Yukon, a full-size utility that handles tight turns with cat-like agility, or the Envoy Denali with 300 fuel-efficient horses bred for seemingly endless stamina. No matter how you use your GMC, we engineer them all to the highest standard. Professional grade. Fred is the ladies' man. We just need to find women with some substance. Chris is the wingman. They sound fat. Together, oh man. Psycho chick. You came with a label. Freddy, series premiere Wednesday at 8.30, 7.30 Central, only on ABC. Tomorrow night, 9 Eastern and 8 Central, Commander in Chief, Gina Davis and Donald Sutherland. Your primetime fair right here on ABC. Right now, your primetime fair is Monday Night Football with Pittsburgh up by four. And San Diego starting from the 41 yard line as Breeze drops back and throws underneath. Tomlinson for a gain of a couple. Here's Sam. Drew Brees and LaDainian Tomlinson, both in their fifth season with the Chargers. They go back further than that, though. Both played high school football in Texas. We're on the same high school all star team. Drew told me, hey, LT made a great catch for me, but neither guy highly recruited out of high school. Passed on by the bigger schools in Texas. Then they met again the 2000 Heisman Trophy presentation ceremony. Drew told me he looked at LT and said, hey, wouldn't it be neat if we played for the same pro team? He told me, I couldn't foresee this. None of us could. And the rest, as they say, is history in the making. That's incomplete, intended for Antonio Gates. Of course, the Bree story, you got to go back to Philip Rivers, Eli Manning. They draft Manning, even though the Manning family said, we don't want to play here. They wind up making the trade. Rivers figures to be the guy, and all of a sudden, Drew Brees has a phenomenal season. Well, you know, two years before, Drew Brees had, had a very good year, and then, and then the year they drafted Rivers, he didn't have a good year. And, but he said he never lost his confidence. We were talking to him the other day, and he said, you know, they bring in Philip Rivers, they have that Eli Manning. He said, I always thought that I was a starting quarterback. He said, I never wavered or thought any differently. And so Rivers on the sideline, third down and seven. And that pass is a wobbler, but it winds up in the hands of Eric Parker for a first down into Pittsburgh territory at the 38-yard line. Threw it over Willie Williams and Joey Porter. And yeah, we were talking about this this defense and every time they get in a passing situation the Steelers go to a dime defense 
That's six defensive backs, and they come in the blitz, and he just gets the ball out there to Eric Parker. You know, he knows that they're doing stuff to Antonio Gates. They're doubling him all the time. They're taking him away. They're taking LaDainian Tomlinson away. You have to get the ball to Eric Parker and Keenan McCardell. And the 38. Under pressure. Almost lost the ball. Then winds up hitting Gates. And you talk about turning nothing into a big something. James Harrison almost ended the play in the backfield, and the next thing you know, they're down to the 18-yard line. They, they win maximum protection here, and this is why it just shows that you have to stay with the play. First of all, James Harrison is going to come in, and right there, he hit Drew Brees just as he's throwing the ball. And watch out here, as, as Gates is going, he almost had his helmet off. He's adjusting his helmet as he's running the pattern. <laughs> That's staying with that's what do you call that multitasking multitasking and Breeze actually had the ball pop out of his hand when Harrison put the rush on now Tomlinson gets inside the 15 yard line it's a gain of four see that little move Tomlinson made at the end that's where he's so good you know that, that he can run on one lane and then he has a lower lane. Watch it here. Here he has one lean. He gets that jump cut. And now watch him get down right here. He says what he does is he just throws his shoulder down and that gets him underneath the tackle. And that's exactly what he did. He just threw that right shoulder down. Jump cut. Like, that's a perfect way to put it. I tell you, the best jump cutter ever was Barry Sanders. Mm -hmm. Walter Payton was a good jump cutter. Yeah. Second and six. And it's a pass intended for Nealon. You know, the comparisons are ridiculous, of course, but you don't want to compare people to other people, especially Barry Sanders, but you talk to enough people around the league with a Tomlinson, and they, they talk about him almost as a, a little bit of a combination of Sanders and Emmett Smith with Emmett's power. Yeah, and I think even a little of Walter Payton in there. I mean, that's you know, I mean, those are those are great backs, some of the greatest backs that ever played. And, Tomlinson had an opportunity to meet Barry Sanders recently and you know, Tomlinson has this whole thing he goes through he has a biomechanics guy he has massage he has all these things he was asking Barry do you have that Barry said no do you have that no do you have that no <laughs> Barry just played third and six and that is a pass into the end zone incomplete intended for Gates in the coverage by Willie Williams the 13th year corner a guy who has been inactive until tonight. Well, they're playing so much six defensive backs, and like I said, they're playing Antonio Gates like he's a wide receiver. And that's why you have dime defense in there, and that's why you have corners on him instead of a linebackers and or safeties. 32-yard field goal attempt for Kading. Mike Cyphers to hold it. Right down the middle it goes. 